You don't, you really don't know struggle till literally nobody in the world takes you seriously. I, I, for the life of me, I cannot figure out why they don't. We are back with another episode of Building a Streetcar. This is Logan, clapped out. Today's episode is Intake Manifolds, Boost Control, and Turbos. Not in that order, specifically. So what are we gonna start with? Are we gonna start with waste gates? CO2 boost control? Turbochargers? Or a plasma man billet intake manifold in all the trimmings? We're gonna start with waste gates. I know that the majority of people that are watching this know how a waste gate works, but I'm going to briefly explain what a waste gate is, what it does. Give me two seconds of your time, more like, it'll probably be like 32 seconds, but just, Focus up, make it through this, and we'll go on to the rest of the tutorial. Tutorial, educational video, we'll go, we'll go on to the rest of the stuff. If I've done my job correctly, there's a graphic to uh, my left over here, and you'll see some arrows pointing up. Those arrows represent exhaust gas flowing out of the engine. That exhaust gas pushes on the bottom of that valve, and again, if I do my job correctly, the picture to my left is gonna show you a spring that's all the way extended, it's not compressed. Well, as that exhaust gas starts to push on the bottom of that valve, you'll see, and again, if I do my job correctly, there's gonna be a new graphic that shows a compressed spring and the exhaust gas pushing up on that valve in order to escape the wastegate, in turn slowing your turbocharger down and uh, creating less boost. So that's a, that's a wastegate. So now you're up to speed on what a wastegate is, how it works, etc., etc. I went with a pair of Tile MVR wastegates, 44 millimeter wastegates. There's a whole bunch of parts that come in it, but we're going to start with the fire ring, which is this right here, this right here. Why do they call it the fire ring? Are you curious? I'm curious too. Let's find out together. You'll see a valve. See that little valve? Put it over here. See it? It's adorable, right? That valve opens and lets exhaust gas in and out. So this is exhaust coming from your engine and then out and dumps into the atmosphere. Now they call them 44 millimeters or they, they determine they're 44 millimeters because that valve, much like the valve in your engine, is cut, if you can see the angle on it, it is cut to accept this fire ring. You see the uh, edge there? That edge on the fire ring causes a seal in the wastegate, so you don't have exhaust leakage. If you forget to put this fire ring in, you'll exhaust leak all over the place from that valve. I cannot count how many shops would uh, forget to put that fire ring in. At my former employer, we'd have stuff come in and we'd be blowing exhaust all over the dyno, pull the wastegate off and, oh, well that would have helped. And that valve diameter is 44 millimeters. So MVR, 44 millimeters. Now you understand what the 44 millimeters is all about. That's what it's about. The Tile MVR, I am a big fan of for a couple of reasons. Number one, let me get that spring out of there. Number one, it is, has multiple lower air openings. So feeding boost to the bottom of the wastegate, you have three different options for that. And on the top of the wastegate, you have two different options. You have two ports. You can read that it says H2, H2O, H2O. So you can water cool these things. Tile offers this option. It's not even an offering. It comes on MVS, it comes on MVR wastegates. You do not have to hook up your water ports to your wastegate unless you road race your car, your wide open throttle for extended periods of time, or if uh, your, your engine bay is super compact and your wastegates don't have a lot of breathing room in terms of how far they are away from your downpipe, etc. Let's take a look at one of these all assembled. Again, this is pretty much ready to rock. You have your top port for your boost reference, your bottom port for your boost reference. You have your H2O inlet port and your outlet port. And you also have these plugs it comes with to plug the holes that you're not using. So for the top port, you can either use the very, very top of the lid or you can use the side. I have that plugged. And then for the bottom port, you have one, two, let me get to number three, three options. So depending on where your wastegate is physically in your engine bay, you have some flexibility there. Next up, we're gonna talk about a CO2 boost control kit. This is gonna be short and sweet because it is very simple and straightforward. There's not a lot of explaining that needs to be done, just a quality product from a quality company. 
I'm gonna be running CO2 boost control. Carter Motorsports, Brandon Carter set me up with this. He sells these kits on his website. They come complete with your bottle, with all your hose you're gonna need. They come with your air fittings and they also come with billet bracket mount. And they sell this billet bracket mount in different IDs for your bar size. So I think one inch to 1.75 inches they carry. You can use this kit for um, CO2 shifter, you can use this for boost control like myself, or you can use it just to blow some cold air on your face on a hot summer day. Not really wearing the hat on purpose, it's just a lucky coincidence, but Carter Motorsports, thank you again for setting me up with a boost control, a CO2 kit, 275 bucks, Carter Motorsports LLC out of Missouri. Take a look at him, not in person like through his window or something, but on Facebook. Next up, we got turbochargers. Choosing turbochargers was difficult for me at first because I couldn't decide between going single or twins. I ended up ditching the idea of a big single and going with twins because of engine bay room and space. A giant large frame single would have been uh, pretty hectic to try to make work with the limited space I had. So I called up John at LJMS and John set me up with a pair of Jose's uh, S366s. Now you can go online right now and you can buy a box stock Borg Warner S366 with your standard T4 housing, just however they sell it. I'm sure that if I'm guessing, they're probably like four to $700, somewhere in that range. They're dirt cheap. You can buy and throw them on your car, ready to rock. I, however, did not want to do that. I wanted billet wheel. I wanted a badass housing. I wanted a V-band turbine side. I wanted, I wanted this thing to be churched up. So when I called LJMS, talked to John, we went back and forth on what we were gonna do with the car, told him what my goals were, and he set me up with a pair of these very churched up S366s. So for the price tag on the forced inductions version of an S366, you get the, for this particular unit, you get the SXE cover, which is a, a nicer cover than what comes with most of them out of the box. You get a complete billet wheel on the compressor side. Obviously the whole turbo is redone in house. Um, on top of that, flip it around here, you're going to see I opted for the V-band exhaust housing as well because I wanted to make uh, hooking everything up much, much easier. I hate four-bolt clamps. I'm sorry, four-bolt flanges. They're annoying. I hate dealing with them. So V-band flanged, billet wheel, redone, S366. This thing is going to be a bad mamma jamma. As it stands right now, if we string these things out, um, we should have enough turbo to make 13, 1400 wheel. So we'll probably run out of talent in the driver department far before we max these things out. But again, LJMS forced inductions. If you need a turbo recommendation or a combo recommendation, that is your go-to. Next up is something I'm particularly excited about, and that would be the billet intake manifold that we are running on the car for this year. Talking about the plasma man and my buddy Darcy. You know, I haven't made fun of any Australian people, so let's start with like the biggest person I know from Australia. Let's meet Darcy. Darcy is a, uh, he's a machinist. He's a, he's a CNC operator, plasma man. And he approached me on Facebook and he said, hey, you should think about running a plasma man intake. And I said, absolutely, I would never say no to a guy that's seven foot six, 376 pounds. You're a terrifying individual. I met him at PRI, and in person, he's just as giant and scary as he is on Facebook. He willingly jumps off things. With, I mean, I don't even think that bungee cord's attached to anything. I think it's all for show. The dude's a maniac. And every time he flies, he gets stopped at TSA for at least 30 to 45 minutes because they know for sure this dude is smuggling some guns. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's just so pretty. So I just come out and I just spray a little polish on it. Sometimes Jasmine has to come out here and drag me back into the bedroom. I wonder, I wonder if it thinks about me when I'm not here. I mean, I, I know I think about it. It's just one of those things where I feel like I get lost inside of it, you know? With hey, me. seriously? Huh? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just, it's my fault. You know, just finding your limits in a relationship. Apparently, loving inanimate objects is uh, frowned upon. All right, all right, just gotta wash that one off. Let's talk about the intake and specifically what all, all, of, all the features of it. It has, it does.
So the Plasma Man intake is a uh, multifaceted design. You have a lid that's separate from the base and the base that's separate from the runners. And then you have these billet spacers for the fuel rail kit. All this stuff is all billet. All this stuff is super sick. Oh, I'm such a fan of this thing. High level overview of what it comes with. It will come with, obviously, I just said your lid, your base, your runners, your fuel rail kit, your spacers. These are LS1 height spacers. You can cut them down as you see fit, which I will have to do. Your adapters to go from the spacers to the rail. Your throttle body adapter, 92 millimeter for me because I don't need a big throttle body because I'm a grown man. Obviously fuel rail here. And these are those spacers and those fuel rail adapters that I just showed you. There's a missing valley cover that is on my engine right now that is at the shop. However, they do send this pretty trick banjo to AN so you can feed off your valley cover with an AN hose, which I love. All stainless hardware, obviously instructions, O-rings. Take a peek inside the intake manifold with the lid off. First, you can see the contour of the lid. I know it's super dusty, don't hate me. And then you can see the profile port openings there. So a nice rolled edge into, into the actual port opening. When you need to port match your intake to your heads, which you should always do, you pop your lid off, much like the all new BTR Equalizer 1 intake manifold. Pop your lid off, you can easily port match your intake manifold to your cylinder heads. It has this nice profiled O-ring all the way around the outside edge of the lid. You can see the separate bolts that bolt the runners to the actual intake manifold. They come partially assembled with just a couple bolts holding the runners on each side, but they do not come with the fuel rails on. I went ahead and I threw this rail on so you could see how that looks. Another cool feature on these that, that I really enjoy is you'll see these holes are not threaded and there's four of them. So you got one, two, three, and four. They also give you these and these are locating dowels. So what you do is you set those in there. Once you get all of your locating dowels installed, it makes centering up the lid much, much easier. I do have a mild amount of beef with Plasma Man and uh, not for not for any reason that anyone else would have beef with them for. Beef, beef, I got beef. My beef with Plasma Man is specifically aimed at the lack of marketing regarding one feature on these intake manifolds that in my opinion is more important than anything else on these intake manifolds. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna see if the viewers can guess what, what feature I'm upset they haven't highlighted more. Anything? Can you guess? Probably not a super fair representation because the rails aren't bolted all the way down, but the rails are even front to back. A lot of intake manifolds, the rails are offset uh, due to, to injector angle. The plasma man intakes are even side to side. So it makes plumbing your fuel system look so much better from an OCD standpoint. Thank you so much for doing that. You guys are sick. One final look at this glorious piece of billet amazingness. And you can see all the little nuances. You have vacuum ports in the back. Look at those bosses, how they're machined out. Man, this thing is just, God, I'm such a fan of the craftsmanship that goes into these. And thank you, Darcy, and everybody at Plasma Man that has welcomed me to Team Plasma Man. It means a lot to me to be a part of, uh, of something as cool as, as your company. And I will say this again, even though I say it in the captions and the uh, descriptions of these videos, nothing that I have shown you was given to me at all. No, nothing has just been gifted in response for a video saying this stuff is cool. And I think that as an industry, on the whole, we need to get away from free parts for positive promotion. I think that that's ridiculous. So I appreciate Plasma Man and Carter Motorsports. I appreciate LJMS, Forced Inductions, Tile, Brian Tooley Racing for employing me. Otherwise, you know, I would be even farther in debt without a normal day job. So thank you guys so much for everything. This is wrapping up episode two of Building a Streetcar with Logan. The last thing I have to say is today is Mother's Day. It's a very, very special holiday to me. I, I hold my mother very close to my heart. I lost her in 2013. I started Clapped Out as a therapeutic adventure to kind of recenter myself after losing her. If you have the opportunity, pick the phone up, call your mom, 
Go to her house, hug your mom if you have the opportunity. I promise there's going to be a time where you look back and you say, man, I, I should have just picked the phone up or I should have just gone over there. I should have made this day more special for moms. So make sure you appreciate and let them know how much you appreciate your moms because without moms, the whole world would fall apart. And that is my final thought of this video. Sunday, go enjoy time with your family. Go enjoy Mother's Day with your moms. Everybody have a blessed day. Thank you for tuning in. Clapped out as a whole. We appreciate you guys so much. Everyone have a wonderful day.